G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Flashlight Crazy. Today I just thought I'd make a, a short video about my regular Malkoff carry. So these two Malkoff lights are my most carried lights out of everything apart from a, well, a couple of weld tools. And so uh, I, will go, I will do maybe my regular weld tool carry as well. But uh, in fact, I will do my regular weld tool carry. But today is all about Malkoffs. So when I kind of take lights out, I like to pair them with things. And the two categories I always take out with me, no matter what, is an EDC category and a self-defense category slash throw category. So it is hard to find both of those categories in the one light. Uh, I think maybe the new mod light PLH V2 uh, with the low high or the high low, that probably would cover your EDC and self-defense because it comes on in high first, so I'm told. Uh, I've never grabbed one. Uh, and it also has a low mode. So that means low mode for EDC, high mode for throw and self-defense. Anyway, for now, I like to use two separate lights for them. Stick around and let's check out why. All right, so I'm gonna just do like a face a face on uh, video today instead of going to the to the desk, uh, but I, I will get up close and show you these lights. So uh, I'll just tell you the reasoning behind why I carry two lights. So one light I always want on me that has a nice, uh, you know, high CRI tint, and it has normally like a low, medium, and high or something around there. For an EDC light, I don't necessarily need moonlight mode. That's more of like a bedside bed, bedside light. But for outdoors EDC, low, medium, and high normally works well. And so what I've got here is I've got the Malkoff MDC head, but this has, if I can just get there it is. So this has the orange peeled reflector, and that there is a Nietzsche 519A 3500K emitter. So what that is, is very beautiful. It is a nice kind of orangey warm tint. It's got great CRI and it is a uh, hot spot and spill light, but I guess it's more of a mixed beam light because it has that orange peel reflector. So this has what's called on time mode advancement, meaning the amount of time that the light is left off makes no difference to when the, the light uh, mode is going to advance. It's all about how long the light's on. So if I leave this light on for more than 150 milliseconds, when I turn it off and back on, it comes on in the same output. Turn it off and back on, same output. But if I don't leave it on for more than 150 milliseconds, watch what happens. It, it advances, mode advance, low, medium, high, low, medium, high. So that's how Malkoff does it, okay? So if I've been on high for a while and then I turn it off as soon as I come back on, back onto low, okay? I do like that because it basically ensures that every time you turn it on, it's gonna come on in low, so you know for certain 100% what your light is gonna come on in. You also know how many times you need to half press the light to get to medium and high. If you wanna uh, get to medium, one, two, click, you're in medium. If you wanna get to high, one, two, three, click, and you're in high. So it, it, it's a really good, uh, mode advance uh, user interface because you know for certain how to get to each output and what it's going to come on in. And I love that in an EDC light. Now, I've kitted this out with a, one of those bezels from Malkoff there. See that? So it just kind of gives it a bit of uh, extra strength and, and it just looks cool. I like it. I didn't want the crenulated bezel as much. Uh, just because I pocket these lights regularly and I, and I didn't know how comfortable that would be. I might try one of the crenulated bezels from Malkoff eventually, but for now I didn't need it. But I've got this on the 16650 body, so it uses a 16650 protected battery. And the, whoa, and the reason why I've got that, just got that there, is because uh, for an EDC light, it's good to have a lot of runtime. And so I use this on the 16650 body and I just really never have to worry about, you know, if someone says, hey, you got a light and I'm holding it there for a while, I'm not in my head thinking, geez, I hope my, uh, hope my light doesn't run out on this poor bloke, you know what I mean? So uh, that's a good thing about having a 16650 body, which is sold at Malkoff. Now, unfortunately, this head is not sold at Malkoff. This head was part of a group by, run by a gentleman named Stephen Cosen. I think if I mispronounced that last name, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, 
Stephen does, uh, he's got a website now and he, he coordinates with Gene and Kathy from Malkoff. He coordinates with the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Andy Zhu. And between those three entities, they, they come out with these amazing lights. I think Andy does all the work to you know, mod them. Uh, Gene and Kathy obviously bloody make them and make bulletproof solid lights. And then Stephen pays for it all and then puts it on his website and sells them. Great thing going, I love it. And I really wanna support it. So uh, go check out his website, I'll link it in the description. Now, this to me pretty much makes a perfect EDC light because it's a 519A high CRI, three and a half thousand K is really awesome, but the size of the hotspot really helps and the uh, orange pilled reflector really helps because 519As when they're domed have a really big hotspot and if you couple that, with the orange peeled reflect up, you kind of get EDC perfection, okay? So again, let's just go over there like that. So I'm very close to the, uh, to the wall and still the hotspot is quite large. Okay, so see that's quite large. The further I go back, the bigger it's gonna get. But check out the spill as well. Very usable, very, very usable spill. So the spill is really phenomenal. You can point this at something and see its immediate surroundings, you know, within a meter or two, really. It's a great, great setup for a light. If Stephen has any more of these on the website, I definitely recommend grabbing one of these heads. And then my opinion is to couple it with a 16650 body. Very nice and slim, very slender, and fits in the hand perfectly. You've got a, uh, it doesn't come with a, with a red boot, but you can just buy one and, and fit it yourself. But it does have a clicky switch, very easy to change out. Uh, so very easy to keep main maintaining these lights. I mean, this thing will run forever. It will outlive me if I look after it. And when I say look after it, I don't have to like baby it or anything like that. Just hit the camera. Uh, I don't have to like baby it or anything like that. Oh, now I just hit the camera, sorry. Man, this is not working out. No, it's okay, it's okay. So uh, you don't have to baby it. It's a, it's a Malkoff. It's full on strong as anything. They're designed to be used, uh, you know, with like recoil, bang, bang, bang type of stuff. Uh, it's potted, oh, where are we? It's potted, so see that, fully potted there, the electronics protected. And it just, it really is to me, one of the most perfect everyday carry lights you can, you can imagine. Falls out of your pocket, pick it up, keep using it. You know, you drop it in water, pull it out, dry it off, keep using it. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great light with a great CRI tint and, and um, good on Stephen and Andy and Gene and Kathy from Malkoff to um, all coordinate and get together and, and, and just produce some brilliant lights. I'm very grateful. So that's my regular Malkoff EDC carry and hopefully I've explained the reasons why. Now, the other, and I guess you could call this an EDC carry because I carry it every day when I couple these two together. Because as I said, there is a well tool EDC mix that I carry together as well. Uh, but this one is not designed for your EDC uses. So despite the fact that I do carry it every day, it is not designed for your EDC uses. This one I carry for a self-defense light slash throw light. So as I said, I love to have an EDC light and a self-defense slash throw light. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, maybe some of you. Some of you have hit me up on the channel before and said, you know, ha, 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 ha. You cannot use a light for self-defense. Go get a gun. And to those people, I say, you're talking shit because I have used a light as a self-defense tool and I live in Australia, I can't carry a gun. So we have to make do with what we can use. And to be honest, even if I could carry a gun, I probably wouldn't because uh, I won't go into that, but I, I wouldn't. Anyway, so with a light being used as a self-defense tool, as I said, I have used it as a self-defense tool more than once and it works a dream, but there are pretty much two things you kind of need to know uh, or need to be ready for when you use a light as a self-defense tool. So if I'm in a situation where someone's kind of like got that, that look in their eye and they're walking up on me, uh, if I just do this, hey man, what are you doing? And just hold the light on their eyes, it's not gonna take them very long before they kind of are like, ah, ah, and then just move out of the way and just come and attack me, really. So the purpose of a self-defense light and in my experience, the way it works well is it buys you half a second of to get the jump on them or to get the jump on the situation. So someone advances on you, they're about to enter your personal space. 
you can either just go to work or you can run. But if you do that first and then go to work or run, you've just bought yourself enough time that potentially could be the difference between life and death or severe injury or whatever. So the way I've used a lot of self-defense before and the way I, I would, I guess, suggest to people to use it as self-defense is have a plan in your head about what you would do if someone approached you in a threatening way and you needed to get away or you needed to defend yourself and what you would do. And if you just stand there and hold a light on their face, you've wasted your opportunity. But if you click and then run, you've, you've in your mind, you've, you've given yourself a plan. It's like, okay, if someone comes up to me, what am I going to do? I'm going to do that or I'm going to like do that, you know, and then I'm taken off that way or, and then I'm doing what I got to do. And so I have a plan and I've got several plans depending on the scenario. And maybe that's being overly paranoid or whatever, but I don't think you can put a price on safety. And you know, the life that I've lived, you certainly can't put a price on safety. So I guess I'm just kind of like sharing my experiences with a light and how it's benefited me. And I'm not going to go into details because they're not YouTube friendly, but I'm definitely a proponent and an advocate for using a light as a self-defense tool if you can do it right. And basically, man, the, the, the best way to do it is to just have a plan with what you're going to do once you shine someone in the face. That's it. And just make that plan specific, you know? So um, think vulnerable spots in the face and, and body or, or, or think exit strategies and things like that. You know, I'm not going to give you all the answers, but just think about that stuff once you've done that. That's all. Now, this Malkoff light that I use as a self-defense tool is the Malkoff E2HT head on a 14500 body. Now, the reason why it's on a 14500 body is I don't want to carry two 16650 lights and I'm only going to be using this very, very sparingly. So the two scenarios that I'm ever going to use this light is one, if I need to see at a distance that this can't do it. And honestly, this on high can see pretty damn far. So it's really like if I need to see up a tree for whatever reason, or if I need to see up a tall building or something like that, which is rare, then I've got this. But the other one is obviously self-defense. But either way, I'm not going to be using this much. So the smaller battery with less capacity is fine for me. It works well. So, and we will go to night shots. I will go to night shots so you can see how these do at nighttime, just over at the park or wherever I do them. Uh, but I don't need a massive runtime for this one for my self-defense slash throw light. So the same as the uh, the other one, this this has a McClicky switch. It's, you know, Malkoff made, brilliant light. Um, one other thing I'll probably touch on about a self-defense light is normally it's best that they're a single output because even a dual output, right? So take the take the mod light that I mentioned earlier, the, the mod light PLHV2, the new one that goes high-low, okay? Or even a Surefire that goes high-low. Problem with that is when you're in a situation uh, filled with adrenaline, sometimes your body does things that you don't want them to do. And so for example, if you click the switch, but you're filled with adrenaline and your thumb shudders a little bit like shakes and it clicks the switch from high to low really quickly, you don't want that. <laughs> so uh, having a single output light is like you can't make a mistake. Okay, you just can't make a mistake because you can, and in fact, it's not just that you can't make a mistake, it actually works in your favor because you can use it to single click and shine. You can use it to strobe if you just tap the light a bunch of times. You can use it to, uh, to signal as well. So another great use about a self-defense light that often gets overlooked is that you don't actually always have to use it as a self-defense light, like shining it in someone's face. If you're walking somewhere and you're you know, several hundred meters away from any crowd of people and you notice that someone's kind of getting a little bit too close for comfort, instead of uh, turning around and confronting that person, I mean, I'd definitely say keep an eye on them, don't turn your back on them, but instead of confronting that person immediately and kind of getting your light out on them, you can just do that to your to the crowd of people a, a, a long way away. That's going to get their attention. And you, I mean, I'd rather be embarrassed than attacked. So if I get people's attention with this, 
and I'm even like, hey, over here, and you know, even like pretend like you know them. Hey, is that Johnny? Johnny, is that you? Hey, it's me, man. Come over. And then they're like, dude, what the hell? I'm not Johnny. I don't, I don't know you. At least you've got a group of people's attention so that if this bloke behind you starts to try and attack you or whatever, they're probably going to come and help, right? So, and that's probably going to make this bloke abort whatever shitty mission he had to do. So again, it doesn't have to be used as a, as a turnaround like, hey, bang, you know, and then blah, blah, blah. It can be used as, as a uh, technique to, to get people's attention, right? So that is my thoughts. And they are, what I just said is loosely based off uh, scenarios that have happened to me and scenarios where I have genuinely been uh, pulled out of, well, I've, I've, I've been assisted in situations because of a light. So I don't go anywhere without a self-defense light or an EDC light. It's that simple. Now, let's cut to night shots uh, and then I'll just finish the video, I guess. Uh, but what I'll do is I will link uh, these in the description. I will link, hmm, what will I do? I'll link this head, the E2HT head and, the, and both bodies at Malkoff. And then I'll link just like a, a light page at Malkoff and I'll reach out to Steven and see if he can give me his, uh, his address URL. I mean, his, his uh, website URL, his address. He won't give me his address, but if he gives me his website URL, then uh, I'll, just, I'll just put that in the description as well. So you can go check out uh, what he's got on offer. And in fact, after this video, I might go check out what he's on offer too, because um, he, he's, uh, he's doing some cool stuff with Malkoff and Andy. So I'm hoping that He's got some sweet gear on the, on the website. All right, thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And stick around for the night shots. They're coming up now. All right, see ya. All right, so we're starting off with the 3500K 519A. And, you know, you've got your EDC uses covered with this, right? And I'll just get up to medium. Look at that beam profile. Gorgeous uh, beam profile due to the depth and the style of reflector and of course the emitter, the 519A. And, you know, I'll just aim over here when I go to high because it is still pretty bright. Okay, so you've got your EDC uses covered with that. How could you not? Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous light and uh, beam profile. It's kind of perfect, right? But then the reason why I carry the E2HT as well is because it's not the throwiest uh, that Malkoff offers. The E2XT, E2XTL uh, are both the throwiest, but the E2HT is slender. It's the same sized head as the one I've got now uh, in my hand. So that's why I like it because it's nice and slender. It doesn't burst out of the pocket. So here we go. There it is. So having both these lights on me, it enables me to have a beautiful EDC use light, as well as a fantastic thrower. And I use this, this light as a self-defense light as well, because it is a single output. So I can click it and strobe it, or I can click it on, I can signal, whatever. So and it's very bright. It, it is very bright, especially, you know, a meter or so away. Uh, mate, it, it is bright. But look, you know, look at the size of the hotspot. It's great for distance. Really cool. So that's why I use both of those lights. And uh, hopefully this little night shot was a bit of uh, knowledge into or a bit bit of a inside look as to how they can be so useful you know the 3500k is just perfect for you know around the house typical EDC uses and then if you need some distance need some brightness some self-defense you can always jump on this one it's fantastic All right, see ya.